In this segment, I'm going to be showing you how to install Cool Retro Term. So you might be asking yourself, what is Cool Retro Term? Well, it's a really neat terminal emulator that emulates the old style terminals. We're talking amber screens, green screens, DOS days, you name it. It's just about already there pre preset for you so you can look the cool part and in front of all your friends that love computers. Now, I'm using Linux Mint for my distribution, but this should work on any distribution that you are using. I've done it successfully also with CentOS, and I think it also even uh, works with uh, Mac OS as well, which I haven't done. But we're going to do uh, a Debian type fork, which is Linux Mint. So let's take a look at that now. We'll go ahead and go to my computer and see what we can do. First thing we need to do is actually get the package itself. It is something you need to install, so we got to do that to accomplish that feat, we need to go to their website and download the package. So I'm going to open up my browser, and I use a little Firefox here, so that should be your right Firefox. Kudos to you. Go ahead and just close this read view. This is a, a very standard installation. There's nothing else on this. I just installed Linux, and everything should be uh, as the defaults are. So I'm going to expand this out just a bit. And you can either type in the full, I, I'll put it in the, in the show notes, the full URL, or you can just search it out. And that's, that's exactly what I'll do. All we have to do is type in cool retro term, and any of your searches should receive this. Now, let's see if we can find this. And there it is right here, it's Swordfish90. Like I said, I'll make sure to put the full URL so that you can just follow that link in the show notes. But uh, I, I, I tend to like to search things out click on my search here, you'll notice this is taking us to GitHub and it's just a nice place for people that are developers to put cool stuff out on the market for us to install. This one specifically. Once you get to the site itself, you need to find the download area and sometimes that can be a, a little uh, difficult to do. There's a lot of stuff to weed through to find it. But I'll show you exactly where it is. It's over on this right hand side. It says download zip. That's exactly what we're looking for. So I'll click download zip. And my distribution says, all right, what do we want to do with this? It's asking me if I want to open this with the Archive Manager. That's not what I want to do. I want to go ahead and save this file. So I will change this to Save File, and we'll hit OK. As you can see, that did not take very long. It's not a large package. Again, this is just a terminal, so it's not a lot of data or anything like that. So it should be pretty quick, 7.5 megabytes, nothing to that. All right, so now that we have our package downloaded, now we got to, well, it's in a zip file, so we got to unzip that, and then we can continue with the installation process. So I'm going to close my browser out, and I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal. I already have a pre-installed terminal. If you have a Linux distribution, I almost guarantee that there is a terminal or a terminal emulator of some sort already built into the system, and they're great, they're fine, but this one's got a little more je ne sais quoi, right? A little, little cooler factor, so we want to get that installed. This is a little small, so I'm going to bump it up a, just a tad bit and make it easier for you guys to see. And let's see here. Now, I should just be able to go into my Downloads folder and find that. So I'm going to do an ls here. There's my Downloads folder, so cd into Downloads. And if I do an ls, there is my package. And you'll see it has that .zip extension, so we need to unzip that. So I just need to run some commands here. One is the unzip command. Well, it makes a lot of sense, right? So I'll use unzip, and I will say, cool, just put the package name in there, because that's what we're wanting to do. We want to unzip the zipped package. Hit return, and as you can see, it dumped everything. Now, the good thing is, is that it did create a folder, and it dumped all that information inside of that folder. So we should just now see a new folder in this directory. So if I do an ls, I now see right around here, this is my new folder. All right, so let's go ahead and change directory into that folder using our cd command. So cd cool retro term, and I will click return, and that should take us to a new folder. We've got all sorts of cool stuff in there that we're going to need to install with. Now, that being said, we need to prepare the distro. You'll notice that in this folder that we just changed directory into, there's a readme.md file. This file is invaluable. It basically is what I'm walking you through right now. It has every step of the way on how to get this installed on, no matter what flavor that you're running on. It has very detailed instructions, which is going to be helpful because it's a little different than uh, other software that you might be installing on a Linux uh, distribution. So you need to, to read the documentation based off of your distribution that you're using. So if you're using CentOS or Fedora or SUSE or, or whatever that you might be using, 
definitely need to check out this README, and that's going to help us get through the rest of this how-to. So I need to look at that file. So I'm just going to do a cat README and hit return. That's going to take us into here. You'll start to see that there is a lot of information in here, but that information, like I said, is very invaluable. That's going to help you get through the installation on your own. So what we need to do is we need to start from the beginning. I'm going to scroll down to it. Let's see here. There we go. It is a, a bit of a large file, but that is okay. So it starts to talk about the description and things like that, but what we're really interested in is how to actually get this thing installed. So that's what we need to do. So what we need to do is we need to prepare the distribution for the installation because there's some dependencies that they need so that it will actually run correctly. It's, it's basically a really fancy terminal, so it's got some, some, some things that probably don't come pre-installed on your Linux distribution system. Now, if you've had a Linux distro for a while and you run it normally, you might already have some of these things, but it's always easier to just go ahead and or follow the defaults that they give you to make sure that you have all the dependencies necessary to make this work. So let's look through. I'm using a Debian type system or an Ubuntu type system. Uh, both of them should uh, work. I'll, I'll stick with Ubuntu because uh, Mint is specifically an Ubuntu fork. So I need, to, I need to look for Ubuntu stuff. So if I look through here, you'll see here it says to get retro term, kind of what we did before. We can go through that. There are pre-installation packages but they don't tend to work as well as if you make it for your specific system. So I'm going to bypass that. Let me scroll down a little bit, and we should find an area for dependencies, and that's under build instructions. Very important. So we look for that. We have dependencies. The first one right out of the gate is Ubuntu. It's a very popular type of a system for Linux, so it's, it's the first one there. Basically, all I need to do is, as you can see, this is quite a lengthy command that I might need to to type in, but I, I'm not a big fan of trying to type that. Not, I'll get it wrong, guaranteed. So I'm just going to copy it and paste it into a terminal. So I'm just going to scroll this and copy all that, that back to the sudo there and say copy. I'm going to open up another terminal so that I can kind of bounce back and forth between. It makes it a little easier for myself. And I'll bump that up as well. And now we can just paste it into that terminal. Now we should be able to run this command. This will download the dependencies that we need to make sure that this terminal will actually run correctly. So if I hit return, it's probably going to ask me for a password since I'm sudoing. Type that in. Hit return. That's going to, here's all the dependencies. Do you really want to do this? Yes. Return. And now we are downloading those dependencies. Very important part, obviously. So this is going to crank through just a few seconds. I don't think it takes that long. It's pretty, pretty quickly done, especially, well, I guess it's going to depend on your internet connection on how fast it is. This is actually reaching out to the internet to download these files. So make sure you do have an active internet connection so that it can actually find them, install them, and then we can move on from there. But it shouldn't take much longer. And uh, in just a few seconds, it'll be done. And then we can move on to the next step. All right, there it is. So relatively straightforward so far, nothing too complex. We're just copying some commands, getting the system ready to install the terminal. All right, so now that we have that done, we need to, let's see here, uh, we'll move on to, ah, yes, a very important part of this. If you don't have the Git client on your, uh, for, from, for GitHub to, to be able to use their, their packaging system and all that, you need to actually install that as well. So that's what we're going to do now. I know that this system does not have Git. You can verify that by just typing git dash dash help. And you'll see Git is not currently installed. That is something you will need. So I'm going to go ahead and follow the instructions here. It says if uh, you can install it by typing sudo apt git install git. So that's what I'm going to do. sudo apt dash git install git. All right. Oh, helps if I actually type the command correctly. That's, that's always helpful. Install, not isnatal. <laughs> install. I'm going to try to do it again. There we go. And there we go. Yes, I'll hit yes to that. And off it runs. This should just take a few seconds. And it's done. Now I have the Git client installed. I can use those Git commands. And that is what we need so that we can make sure that this works. So make sure you do this section. It's very important. All right, now that we have that, we need to go ahead and take a look at here. I'm going to just do an ls. Actually, I'm going to go back to my other terminal. This is where this can get a little hinky. But let me go back here. And uh, I'm going to do an ls. And you'll see that, uh, let's see here. 
I do have some uh, files and stuff. Okay, yes, this is definitely where we move on. Let me let me go back into our our README file. We want to follow those instructions step by step. Make sure we don't miss anything. So now that we've installed Git, we've installed all the dependencies. It should have some more instructions for us here. So let's see. Let's look for our compile portion. I think that was it right there. There we go. So now that we have that done, we need to find this compile section so we can actually get these things working and we'll be almost done and we can install the, the actual terminal. So from the bash clone, it's giving us some commands. You'll notice that it is a git command and that's why we need a git so I can actually run these commands and make it work. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste and let it do the magic because as you've seen before, I'm a horrible typist. So I'm just going to copy that. Let's see here, copy go over here, type, right click and paste it in. And I might even need to sudo, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, excellent. That all worked fine. Not a problem. Now I've got another step done. So now all I have to do is come back over here and now it says build it. That's now we're actually going to actually be building this thing. So I need to CD into a directory as it says right here. Here's the directory we need to CD into. So I'm going to go back to this one here. Let's see here. We should have cd slash cool retro term. Let me see here. I think I'm missing something really like quickly. I might actually be in there already. Where's that at? There we go. So build a cool retro term. I think that's where we're at. I think we just need to do the q make. And yes, that's exactly right. So all we need to do now is run this. I've actually already uh, changed directory. I'm in this. That's why I couldn't find it. <laughs> it was a little weird, but there we go. Now we can run the command like this where it has this and and. It's basically saying run this command, and if it runs true, run the next command. But I'm going to run them separately because I've, I've had a little bit of trouble using that in the past, but I haven't had any trouble just running the commands individually. So I'm going to run them that way. And remember, when you do certain things, you might need to sudo as well. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just say sudo qmake qmake and give it my password and now that's done and now I just need to do a make oh I might need to sudo make and I'm getting an error of course let's see here okay so I found my error the problem was that I was copying pasting into that second terminal and I just needed to run uh, the command that I, I ran over here I'll show it to you was that git clone needed to run it in the same directory. So that's an important feature, something I was unaware of until just now. So easy fix, just come over into the actual directory where you're working and run that command there. You'll notice I did that and everything seems to be working now. So I will just go ahead and cd into that cool retro term. And now I will do qmake, that ran, and then make. And now this is going to take a minute. You'll notice the make file is running it is actually building the, uh, the, the program itself, compiling it, making sure everything works. This will take you a minute or two, uh, depending on your, um, the, your processing speed and your RAM and all that other business, how much system resources you have. Once it's done though, we should be good to go. So we're gonna take a minute and when we come back, we're gonna have this, it's gonna be done and we're gonna show you exactly how it works. All right, so now it's completed, it's, it's making, right? It's done, the program should actually be installed we should be able to run it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the computer here and see how that looks. You'll notice there's a lot of uh, action going on there in the terminal. Nothing we need to really worry about other than the fact that it is done and it should be installed. So if I do an ls here, I should now have an extra uh, a little file in there and we'll see it. It is right here. Cool retro term. That is the executable file. All we'd have to do at this point is run it and it will actually run. So I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. That'll, that'll be nice. If I just do a dot slash cool retro term, hit enter, we will see this is it. This is the cool retro term. And as you can see, it's pretty darn cool. It's got the old amber screen, but wait, there's more. You can go up into these profiles here and change into some of the default profiles that I have. Very cool stuff. Uh, we can change this to green. We can change it to having scan lines. So, you know, any kind of old style terminal that you may have used in the past, especially like your old school geeks like us back in the late or the early 90s and the uh, late 80s and into the late or the earlier 80s and on, 
you'll see things like this. So you do an LS, you'll see it gives you that old retro terminal look. Very cool. One of my favorites is the uh, transparent green. Oh yeah, just give me those scan lines going down. Looks great. I think it's really cool. You can change the font and play with it a lot. If there's uh, if you just go into the edit and hit settings, got plenty of stuff to play with. Uh, go into the screen, change color, size, font size, you name it, it's in here. Here's where you can change the colors and the font size, anything like that, whatever font you want to use. Make it look cool, have a good time with it. Now, when we were talking about this earlier, not necessarily something you need, but necessarily something maybe you'd want. And the cool thing about it is, is that you learn a lot about your Linux system, um, installing things, different stuff, having to work in the directories. And the one last thing I want to show you with this is we want to make this executable anywhere I'm at. And I want to be able to run it from my desktop. That's going to be the, the best part about it. I want to just hit an icon, launch this up whenever I want, and or launch it from another terminal if I'm in that as well. So let's finish it up. Let's do that. I'm going to close out this stuff and go ahead and close the terminal and go back into our terminal here. So what we first need to do is we may need to make this a global executable command. And to do that, there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can either append the path variable that's in your Linux system, or we can just make a symbolic link to one of the, uh, the paths that are already in the path variable. And that's typically the easier way to go about it, at least in my estimation, for things like this. So that's what I'm going to do. We're going to create a symbolic link to this executable file in one of those paths. So let's do that now. Take a look. I can go ahead and close this out. And for clarity, I'm going to clear the screen. So what I need to do is I need to create a symbolic link. And I'll need to sudo this because I'm going into, I'm going to, I'm going to link it into a directory that needs root privileges. So I'll just do a little sudo there. And we're going to do ln to link dash s to let it know it's a symbolic link. That way, if the path does change, it will follow that, or at least it should. All right. So now we need to just put in the actual path name of this thing. And we can see that above us there. So I will say, uh, I'll do my home directory. It's a little tilde slash downloads slash cool. Ooh, let me get rid of that extra slash there. Slash cool retro term master slash cool retro term slash cool retro term. That's the full path that I need to put in so it knows where the executable is and then name where I want to link this file. Where I'm going to put that is in the user directory, so slash usr, slash bin, and then give it an actual file name. We'll just call it the same thing, cool retro term. I got that spelled right, uh, retro term. All right, if I hit enter, should be good to go. You'll notice I didn't get any errors or anything. So now I should be able to move into any directory I want and call that command, and it should run. So let's try that. I'm going to go into the Etsy, let's see, etc. And if I do cool dash retro dash term, it should fire off the terminal because it is now a global executable. It should work anywhere I'm at. So I'm going to close that out. And now what I want to do, I want to make myself a little bit easier and have a desktop icon. So if I'm in a desktop environment, I'm running this, and I mean, and basically that's, that's what you should be doing. That's where, that's where we're at. This is a kind of a gooey, cool thing. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I don't need the terminal anymore here. And in Linux Mint, this is going to be different for each. I'm going to show you Linux Mint because that's what I'm running. But uh, you'll just have to figure out how to work with your task bar and, and uh, icons and things like that. But for me, I can just right click on one of these things and hit Add. And it's going to give me a little prompt. I can name it. I'll call it Cool Retro Term. Give it the command, which we already know, which is Cool-Retro-Term. And then if I want, I can even change the icon because that little red rocket ain't, ain't doing it for me. I'm going to go down and just find an actual terminal icon so that I know what it is just from a visual. And there's X term. So that should work. And there's a, that's what it should look like. I'll hit OK. And then I hit OK. And now it's asking me if I want to add it to the start or the start menu that goes into to Linux Mint here. I'll say, yeah, why not? And you'll notice I now have a new icon here. If I hover over it, it calls it Cool Retro Term. I know that's what it is. And if I click on it, it fires up my cool retro term. So that's how you install it. Play around. This is so much fun. I've, I've actually really started digging this and getting into it, using it as my own terminal. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and you like it and stuff. But that's how you install the cool retro term in Linux Mint.